After migrating to London, life was full of promise. No, 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 Jim, it's not for you. Pass it down. <laughs> we stick to your milk, kid. But that was all about to change. UK Border Agency, we need to conduct some interviews here. You've got no political affiliation back in Zimbabwe, so you're not running away from anybody there. You've been living here illegally in this country, haven't you? Demetria Karanga. I went to the home office. I met this guy after interviewing me. He started hitting me. What did she? Just pour the drinks, love, will you? Starring Jason Ash in this heartbreaking story of abuse of power. Where's my red passport? You promised me. You think I could just dish out British passports like that? Shut it. You look a little sad. And I will kill you. Just when they thought life couldn't get any worse. Well, that'll teach you for messing around with somebody like me. You're gonna die. What are you doing down, man? Introducing Lorraine Fox. Get out of the way, you prick. <laughs> Show me what you've got. If there's one film you Boy. should see this summer, GMC Pictures presents <laughs> To the End of the Road. Coming soon. Also featuring Henry Alonga, Ryan Muldoon, Decibel, Ashley Majaya, Kaz, and Robbie G. To the End of the Road. Coming soon. Follow us. Facebook to the end of the road. Twitter. GMC Pictures UK. We are the hollow men. We are stuffed men leaning together, headpiece filled with straw. Alas, our dried voices when we whisper together are quiet and meaningless as wind in dry grass or rat's feet over broken glass in our dry cellar. Trainers go straight to the pub after work. Oh, you start of hearing you neck, neck, neck. You know as much as I do that the only reason he goes there is to fraternize with those ladies of the night. <laughs> My <laughs> if you spend time pleasing your husband instead of yucking like a chihuahua, yuck, 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 yuck. maybe you wouldn't go to those loose women. <laughs> Uh, One who changes husbands more often than underwear. <laughs> 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 anyway, go on. 
when you can hold down a man for more than five minutes, then you can qualify to give me advice. Or anyone else here for that matter. In the meantime, my dear, my advice to you is to keep your mouth shut. <laughs> That was completely uncalled for. Only he was only trying to help. We all need each other as women. After all, all we have for each other is support us. Men are so unpredictable. It takes that reference, for instance. Who would have thought that a man of his stature would stop that law? <laughs> Apparently, Askana, she wasn't the first woman either. She was the only one, I'm saying, only one who was willing to come forward and testify. <laughs> Um, ladies, <laughs> if you can make it earlier than 8 a.m., I would really appreciate some help with the cooking. <laughs> Baba Eliza has invited the whole neighborhood. <laughs> what a wink, man. She kept me up all night. <laughs> <laughs> okay, schedule me. <laughs> Don't forget, it's 2 o'clock tomorrow. GMT tomorrow. Not the whole time, right? But three presents. <laughs> Now that we are here, we can get the party started. Ave Elisa, please lead us in prayer. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for this glorious day. We thank you for the family and friends that have graced our household. We proclaim this day to you, Lord, that everything goes according to plan. We pray that this day mean a lot more to Elisa than just a birthday day. That it is the day that she declares her life to you so that her dreams come true. We pray that you protect our children from all the evils in our land. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 Thank you, Mama. We may now sing for the cake. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Make a wish. I wish to be a famous musician and a tennis player or a nurse so I could help people. And I'm also going to be an actress and marry Denzel Washington. <laughs> you are not supposed to say it out loud. Now everyone knows your secrets. And besides, Denzel Washington will never marry you because you are too ugly. Oh, God, my son. Hey, leave your sister alone. Ah, Elizabeth, remember, what the mind conceives, you can achieve. You can shape your own destiny. If you are focused, nothing can stand in your way. You can be what you want to be. 
A famous man Anna once. <laughs> uh, may you please help your niece with the cutting of the cake? Taonga, <laughs> more music, Mwanangu. <laughs> Am I boy? Am I boy? I'll be wrong. She looks like me. She's suspicious. So they beat you up, took your clothes off, and put that condom on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not his wife. He had been having it off with the maid. Oh. You know, you can imagine how she must have felt. And you know, she treated this girl like your own sister. Some money, go down to the shop and see what you can find from there. It's not your birthday, it's Elizabeth. Lovely as a rose, you know that. Now, where are you going all smartly dressed like that? Don't tell me. You must be going to a beauty contest, aren't you? It's my birthday. And oh. the girl gave me some money, so I bought myself this teddy bear. Okay. And I wanted the one Reese with a spoon at Legally Blonde. Okay, that's right. So, you. You must be. You must be uh, Eliza. Elizabeth, of course. How could I forget that? Uh, look, Elizabeth, your father sent us to come and pick you up. They're waiting for you back at the house. Come on, you don't want your father to start worrying about you now, do you? No. Of course not. <sighs> wow. Those are, those are lovely shoes. I love your shoes. They're so beautiful. You know what? Those make you look like a movie star. <laughs> look, Elizabeth. I wasn't meant to tell you this, but uh, there's a surprise waiting for you back at the house. Yeah, so come on, let's go. Miss Elizabeth, your carriage awaits. That's great, everyone gets cakes. Oh, that's why Sidney gave me some money. Uh, 
Does Mama and Tatunga know about the surprise? Uh, and of course they don't. It wouldn't be a surprise if they did now, would it? Yeah. Come on, get it, get it. Let's go. Right, Miss Elizabeth. This is where your surprise birthday party is, okay? Mm. Right, now you come with me and I'll show you where to wait. <laughs> I promise you everything will be alright, okay? How old is she? She's 13 exactly. It's her birthday today, sir. We told her that the surprise party was here. I think we got the wrong girl. Maybe if we, if we leave and find someone else. Nonsense, Kelvin. Don't be silly. Have you gone mad? I haven't gone mad, sir, but it's a birthday today, for goodness sake. What is wrong with you? Those who have crossed with direct eyes to death's other kingdom remember us, if at all, not as lost, violent souls, but only as the hollow men, the stuffed men. <laughs> It's all my fault. Such an old coat. It's all my fault. It's okay. No. It's okay, Eliza. Daddy's here. Daddy's going to make everything all right. Daddy's going to make everything okay. Don't you worry. Mr. and Mrs. Mutuma, I am Dr. Matunge. Oh, and there's that brave little girl. How are you feeling today, my dear? She'll be fine. She'll be okay. Mr. Mtum, can I speak with you? Please come with me. Mr. Mtum, there is no easy way of conveying this to you. And I cannot even begin to imagine what you're going through right now. Well, we did a pelvic examination. 
and the cervix was badly affected. Along this is the cervical canal, which is the gateway to the endometrial cavity or the womb. Now, mucus secreted from these tiny glands assists the cervix in providing a barrier against infections ascending to the endometrium and fallopian tubes. Now, the forced penetration was uh, so violent that uh, it caused damage to the cervix and, and possibly the glands. And the uterus was ruptured in the process. So, Ultimately, what this means is, um, what this means, Mr. Mutuma, is Elizabeth will never be able to have any children. conquer as many women as possible in his life. Come on, please. This, my friend, was not put there for decoration, or else God would have put a flower there. Gentlemen, yeah, gentlemen, I need there. something to wash all this food down with. What's wrong with you? Don't you ever get tired of talking about pussy? Probably as much as you don't get tired of eating, my esteemed uh, brother. OK, OK. Instead of focusing on piling on all that cholesterol, you should be channeling your energies on the finer aspects of life. Mm. Was it light? Pussy, 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 yeah, pussy! Come on. <laughs> he don't stop. No, <laughs> son, you realize you're digging your grave with your dick, don't you? No, man. No, you thrive on sex. Hasn't that nasty experience in school taught you anything? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, you're not invincible. Huh? Do you know that the major cause of death in Africa is HIV? Professor Farai strikes again. Man, you at that law institute for too long. You've been brainwashed. Why is everything with you about rhyme and reason? I keep telling you, AIDS, AIDS is an American idea of discouraging sex. <laughs> I've been playing the field since I had puberty. And look at me, still strong as an ox. Yeah, and you look like one too. <laughs> but seriously, guys, I'm really getting thirsty. Jonathan, I think it's your wrong yeah. boss. Same orders for everyone, right? No, make mine a double this time, fellow. Uh, make some cigarettes. I seem to have run out. So, Sam, you are saying that uh, AIDS is a, is a myth, right? A pigment of our imagination. No. That all these people dying around us are uh, some kind of illusion. Huh? Oh, that. Frivolity of our psyche? Huh? Gentlemen, the crux of Africa's survival is dependent upon breaking down the walls that have kept her imprisoned for so long. You see, as long as we hold on to our prehistoric values, we will remain at the back of the bus. You see, gentlemen, an attitude is defined as a learned predisposition to respond either positively or negatively to a set of stimuli. And quite frankly, we as a society have, have taken the latter. What can I say? No, I'm not saying that, Malcolm X. What are you saying? All I'm saying is it's like syphilis, gonorrhea, and all the other VDs, STIs, whatever you call them. Listen, some people are immune to it, like moi, and other people, and others are not. Those who are not, just chew the right roots, prescribed by the witch doctor, and hey presto, they're on the mend. Yo, I think it's time to. Jono, have you ever heard such bullshit in your life, huh? You know, there is nothing more terrifying than arrogance and ignorance at such a high level. Welcome to the real world. There are some sick people out there. Did you read in the paper the other day? That little girl that was kidnapped and raped? Oh man, some, some businessman was carrying out some ritual, you know, to enhance his portfolio. They know who he is, but they won't even arrest the fucker. You see, yeah? Sam, you see, this is what I'm talking about. The same old story. The rich are above the law. Nothing ever changes. It's like transgression is the pleasure of the rich. As long as the elephants are there, the grass will always suffer. See, it makes my blood boil to think that we inflict this kind of injustice on each other two decades after independence. The accolade given to the rich is the cause of the collapse of the morals and values of African society. Did you know that there is this, this belief that uh, sleeping girls is the cure for HIV and AIDS? Yeah. 
You see, there is no hope for the next generation if the guardians of society are the very same individuals whose mental faculties are compromised. People need to start facing the fact there is no cure for the what epidemic. What are you complaining about, Farah? I mean, yeah. a successful high-flying lawyer like you. Tell him. This was for, for you, Professor. But you they didn't have a lion like that, so I bought you as a maze. So after all, a beer is a beer. You want a lion? Go to the game park. <laughs> cheers. 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 It's all good. Cheers. But you see, Fat Joe, you're getting it wrong. See, the only reason why people like me are flying high, as you call it, is to be the voice of the voiceless. See, African people need to stop being so, so pusillanimous, man. Huh? And what is the point? There is absolutely no reason why one should know. You see, Constance, Constance. Give a baby. If there was a snake in your kitchen, would you not want to know about it? <laughs> <laughs> Knowing your status is not a death sentence, but ignorance of it is. Do you know that one in every three people are infected, and they don't even know it? Hey, I'll be beside myself with one. If anything, that would probably kill me. Ah, uh, <laughs> You know what they say? <laughs> what you don't know won't hurt you. Mm. <laughs> I hear one. <laughs> Connie, <laughs> I also tried to talk to Baba Chip about going to the new start center. And you know what he promised me? <laughs> A sound beating if I ever mentioned it again. All right. All right. All right. Uh -uh, uh -uh, it is against uh -uh. our culture to disobey your husband's wishes. My husband's second wife, Manawaki, died of pneumonia when it was 18 months. Oh, no. Kuno kwa my mana. My nini is in hospital, suffering from an acute case of TB. You are looking at a temple. Dweta will say, Ininda kungo mirira sofa. What can I do? What can I do? I'm with There's a lot you can do. There is a lot we can do. Society is held together by women. One word, ladies. Education. Our people are illiterate. Eh, fair enough. There's literature out there. There is media. But what are we doing as a community? Sex education is taboo in our society. And right now, teenagers are having affrontated sex. Why, ladies? Why? Let me tell you why. We are still clinging to the old-fashioned ideals and morals. Uh, and the world is moving on without us. Uh -huh. <laughs> Arrogance <laughs> yields disaster, Mazimai. And we're headed for one. Okay, so. Eyes I dare not meet in dreams, in death's dream kingdom. These do not appear. There the eyes are sunlight on a broken column. There is a tree swinging, and voices are in the wind singing, more distant, more solemn, than a fading star. Pete and repeat were in a boat, Pete for that was there. Repeat. Pete and repeat were in a boat, Pete for that was there. Repeat. Dad is here. Dad is here. Mommy. Tatonga, I told you the food will be ready in a few minutes. Dad is here. Daddy, the police came and Eliza was crying and Daddy, are you listening Tatonga. to me, Daddy? Tatonga, yes. Tatonga, please go outside and play. Go ahead, Mommy. Baba Elisa. Baba Elisa. Hey, Isaac. It's not your fault. What happened could have happened to anyone. 
She is 13. She is a child. She is only a child. My child. My job is to protect you. And I failed. What kind of a parent am I? Just tell me. It's okay, Elisa. Please come. It's okay. Elisa. See my baby just like this. No, I can't. I have to stop this once. Let me be no nearer in death's dream kingdom. Let me also wear such deliberate disguises, rat's coat, crow skin, cross staves in a field, behaving as the wind behaves, no nearer. Kelvin. Kelvin! What is wrong with you, man? You look like you have seen a ghost or something. Are you alright? Uh, yeah. Tell Giants to get the car ready. I've got a meeting in the city this morning. Come on! Come on! Giant, bosses, get the car ready. This is the dead land, 
This is Cactus Land. Here the stone images are raised, where they receive the supplication of a dead man's hand under the twinkle of a fading star. All right. Silence. Um, good morning, Your Worship. May it please the court to deal with the first matter on today's row, the matter of state versus um, Isaac Mutuma. Stand up, accused person. Uh, my learned colleague has an application to make. Good morning, Your Worship. I appear for the accused. The accused understands the allegations against him and therefore waives the right to have them explained to him. Your Worship, my instructions are to apply for bail on behalf of my client. The grounds for my bail application are my client is a family man. He is of fixed abode and owns both movable and immovable property. He is gainfully employed, and therefore any further incarceration will lead to my client losing his job. <coughs> Furthermore, he is prepared to place with this honorable court a bail surety of $10 million. Your Worship, I submit with all due respect that justice will have been duly served if my client's bail was granted. The state opposes the bail application, Your Worship. And uh, the grounds for such opposition are the complainant is in a critical state. And uh, if he were to die, it may become necessary to charge the accused person with murder. <coughs> Secondly, Your Worship, the state deems accused person to be an emotionally charged up person that uh, if he were to be released on bail, he could further attack the complainant. Alternatively, the accused person could be attacked himself by those uh, sympathizers of the complainant. So your worship, in the interest of um, protecting the accused person, and indeed the public, it is the state's considered opinion that the accused person be remanded in custody. I have listened to both your arguments, and you both make valid points. But in the interest of public safety, this court has found it necessary to remand the accused in custody. Application for bail is therefore dismissed and the accused will reappear in court on the 21st of June. May it please the court to deal with the second matter on today's court, the matter of Arnold Palmer sending and the state. I see you did not eat your breakfast. You need to try and start eating up your food. So you can start building up on your strength. Why? My paper. Why didn't I get my paper? Oh, there it is. There you go. Hello, boss. Get everything. Excuse us. Okay. Did you find out who that maniac who tried to kill me was? Yes, I did. Well, anyone I know? Who was it? No, it's it's not anyone you know. It's the girl's father.
Kevin, listen to me. This is what I want you to do. Denga, denga munenyene. Listen to me. There is no evidence, no witnesses. You might as well close the docket. But sir, this little girl can identify her abductors. And I do have a witness. A woman who sold sweets to this child before she was taken. But the stupid woman refuses to testify. She's afraid of being victimized. Sir, I spoke to Elizabeth. That's this little girl. And her description of the car, of the house, the inside of the house, sir, it is so vivid. You've got to give me a warrant to get in there. Please, sir, give me a warrant to get into that house. Then, do you know how powerful this person is? Oh, Joe, did you know that uh, fish only grow as big as the tank? Hello, fishy, fishy. If we make any mistake, I mean any mistake at all, both you and me could find ourselves on the street, Joe. Leave it alone. After all, it's not worth it. This, this, this condemnation of middle classes in this part of the world does not apply. Jump on the walk, jump on the gravy train, Muningina. With all due respect, sir, I feel coming. Oh, Kelvin, I haven't seen you in a while. Uh, Joe. Let me see what I can do. Just let me think of the best way forward. Yes, sir. Take a seat, my friend, Kelvin. Yeah? Have you seen you in a while? Yeah. I heard the boss spoke to you. OK. Told me to give this to you. Thanks, girl. You're welcome. Kelvin. Hi. My name is Dave. Joseph Dave. I was hoping that we could have a small talk. It won't take long. Just, just a minute. Just a minute. Please. Have a seat, Mr. Domingo. Domingo. That's Mozambican, isn't it? Yeah. I had a friend, my best friend, in fact, called Antonio. He was from Mozambique. We used to have fun when we were children. He went back home just after we finished school to start a construction company. You know, he was always telling me that all Mozambicans are very kind and honest. Is that true, Mr. Domingo? Yeah, I suppose you can say that. Is that true of you, Mr. Domingo? Mr. Domingo, Kelvin, 
May, may I call you Kelvin? You work for Mr. Mapoka, don't you? Elizabeth spoke very fondly of you. Look, Kelvin, you don't have to get caught up in this mess. Hmm? Have you ever heard of the term accessory to a crime? No? I'll explain. In this country, it means that you, you, Kelvin, go to jail. And the boss, well, the boss gets away scot-free. Kidnapping. Rape. Do you have any idea what they do to people like that in jail? Do you, Kelvin? Hmm? Every night, I hear her screaming. Every time I close my eyes, I see her. She, she looked very pretty that day. <laughs> very happy. <laughs> and and uh, she 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 told me she. She had a lot of dreams. <laughs> oh God, what have I done? <clears throat> uh, Kelvin, I want you to tell me everything that happened on that day. And I will do everything in my power to help you, if you cooperate. Hmm? Okay. Good. Let's begin. Look, I think you're being rather unfair and irrational. Of course it's important. You know it is. But... but and they're not related. Look, my career is... Colin, can I get a word in, please? Look, I can't talk to you when you're like this. Look, can we talk about this over dinner tonight, when we have both calmed down? Hold on one minute, Colin. Yes, Jackie? Miss Marty, there's a Mr. Dango on line one. Okay, put him through. Hello, Colin? Hello? <sighs> hello? Uh, hello, Miss Marty? Yes. Uh, my name is Joseph Denga. I'm with the CID. I understand you are representing Isaac Mutumo. Yes, that is correct. I am handling that case. Now, I realize that this is a bit unorthodox, but there are a few aspects that have come to light, which I think you might be interested in. I was hoping we could meet. Um, oh, okay. Um, how about lunchtime at, the, at Alan's Cafe? That's fine. Um, I'll be wearing a black shirt and blue jeans. Uh, how about 12.30? That's fine for you. 12.30 is fine. I'll see you then, Mr. Denga. Mm. 
Mr. Denga? Yes, Ms. Martin. Nice to meet you. Yes. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Please, sir. Um, may I order you some drinks, um, food? I'll just have a bottle of water, please. Bottle of water? Yes, sir. Just water, just water. Yes. Miss Mate. We need, we need to put this Mapoka animal away once and for all. Definitely. And I have the evidence and the witness to do so. But first, I have a plan. Is it like this in death's other kingdom? Waking alone at the hour when we are trembling with tenderness. Lips that would kiss. Warm We had a special prayer for you at church. God has got a plan for you. How are the boys? They are all fine, except Guti. Amai's blood pressure has been high since the remand. Bye bye, Eliza. I've brought you some food. Uh uh. You must eat some of it first. to sing your song. You wash my hair, you wash my hair, you take me to Dr. Bill, you fix my Barbie doll, my Barbie doll, you kiss me when I'm crying, you hug me when I'm sick. It's not easy being your dad, but it's easy to love a dad. Daddy, I love you. Eliza, wait for me outside. Come on. Bye-bye, ah. Dr. Matonge called me yesterday. Mm -hmm. they, they tested Eliza while she was in hospital. She, she's HIV positive. Elizabeth is HIV positive. No. My name is Joseph Denka, CID. CID? Yes. I was expecting a doctor. Mr. Mapoka, just, just a few questions. Do you know the man that attacked you? Young man, I am a businessman. I have a lot of enemies. That man was the father of a little girl. A 13-year-old girl, to be precise. She was raped about a week ago. 
What has that got to do with me? Why are you telling me all this? I was hoping that you would tell me, Mr. Lapoka. That little girl. That little girl was raped in your house, Mr. Mapoka. She describes it so vividly. Did you rape that little girl, Mr. Mapoka? Don't be ridiculous, you son of... Get out. Get out now. How dare you come in here and accuse me of such, such... Hey, young man, do you know who I am? Hey, you don't. I know exactly who you are, Mr. Mapoka. Men like you make me sick. You discredit the good name of the African people. You're pathetic. Do you know that? Oh. By the way, I almost forgot. I ran into your boy, Kelvin, at the station. The boy sang like a canary. You are going down, Mr. Mapoka. And when you do, I will be there. Have a nice day, sir. Mom, Spencer, answer the phone. Spencer! Spencer! I've got a job for you. Listen very carefully. The eyes are not here. There are no eyes here in this valley of dying stars, in this hollow valley, this broken jaw of our lost kingdom. In this last of meeting places, we grope together to avoid speech gathered on this beach of the tumid river, sightless, unless the eyes reappear as the perpetual star, multifoliate rose of death's twilight kingdom, the hope only of empty men. And a man identified as Kelvin Joseph Domingo was found dead at a small farm just outside the city. The victim had been stabbed and crushed by a rock. The motive for the killing has not yet been established, but this is believed to be a victim of a spate of gang wars that is gripping the city at the moment. Meanwhile, the United Nation. Jackie, please get me Mr. Denga. Miss Mata, I have Mr. Denga on line one. Thanks, Jackie. Hello? Hi. Joe? Hello? Hi, C. Hi, Joe. You sound very jovial this morning. Did you win the lotto or something? No, no, no. Better than that. Did you listen to the news just now? Uh, yes, I did. Looks like your hunch paid off. It's time to bring that bastard home to roast. I am sorting out the arrest warrant as we speak. Great. Phone me later and describe to me the look on my pocket's face when you read him his rights. I'll do that. All right. Bye. Mr. Mtuma. You work for an engineering company, don't you? Yes. Yes, Your Worship. You say yes, Your Worship, when addressing the court. Now, Mr. Mtuma, will you tell this court, what else do you represent at your place of work? I'm also a representative of the Workers' Union. Mm. Representative of the Workers' Union. It is fair, then, to say you've got a good grasp of the law. Yes, Your Worship. Are you familiar with the term, taking the law into your own hands? Yes, 
you worship. No further questions. Marge, do you wish to re-examine? Mr. Mtumwa, how many <coughs> cases have you dealt with in your term of office as representative? About 20, your worship. 20. And in your 20 cases, what has been your rate of success? My rate of success is about 8 out of 20, 10 cases of worship. So you feel that your co-workers are so happy with your representation that um, they come to you at all times? I have no doubt in my mind your worship. Mr. Mutumba, what would you say the secret of your success is? It's not a secret. We follow a constitution, the basis of which is representing the people. We, as the Workers' Union, we have the people's best interest at heart. After all, they voted us in. So, if for any reason, one of your members felt you weren't representing them effectively, what do you think would be the repercussions? <laughs> there, there will be chaos in the workplace, and this will be counterproductive. No further questions, Your Worship. Any submissions? Indebted, Your Worship. <clears throat> the police serve a purpose, and that is to maintain law and order. There is no lenience for people that choose to take the law into their own hands. The law must always be allowed to take its full course. And parental instinct is no leeway to breaking the law. Otherwise, if that were the case, then people would do whatever they wanted and would lose good governance. As in accused own words, there would be chaos. Your worship, we need to make an example with this case, lest we make a joke of our justice system. No further submissions. Africa prides herself as being self-righteous. She is referred to as Mama Africa because of her maternal instincts. She is known for her rich culture and for the comfort of her bosom. Our very culture and human decency has been soiled. My client is not on trial here. Our dignity and self-respect is why should transgression be the pleasure of the rich? Because of one man whose mental faculties are compromised, national pride is at stake. Is that a price worth paying? Elizabeth is 13 years old. And like most 13-year-olds, she has dreams. She wants to be a nurse so she can help people. She wants to be an actress, so she can travel the world. When you are 13 years old, the world is your oyster. And why not? You can be what you want to be. Isn't that what we tell our children? Elizabeth's dreams were snatched away from her and replaced by a death sentence on her 13th birthday. May I ask everyone to close their eyes, please? As she walked home that afternoon from the shops, 
Elizabeth had the world in the palm of her hand. It was a beautiful day, very much like this one is. She ran and she leapt and she was free and happy. I know most of you here have children. So imagine if that was your child. You may open your eyes now. Our obligation to our children is to care for and protect them. When that obligation is snatched away from us, all rationale is lost. My client, like any upstanding citizen, appealed to the authorities, but the system failed him. Why? Because the system is marred with unscrupulous elements. My client called out for help, and no one took heed. He became a lion, wounded and trapped in a snare. He had to defend his kingdom, and he did that the best way he knew. Sleepless nights, nightmares, have become the order of the day in the Matumwa household. And they will continue to haunt Elizabeth for the rest of her life. Surely a man standing up against a failed system cannot be a criminal. Evil triumphs when good does not do anything. Send Mr. Mutomo home, back to his family. <clears throat> this court will now adjourn, and we will reconvene at two o'clock. No worries. <laughs> Here we go round the prickly pear, prickly pear, prickly pear. Here we go round the prickly pear at five o'clock in the morning. Between the idea and the reality, between the motion and the act, falls the shadow. For thine is the kingdom, between the conception and the creation, between the emotion and the response, falls the shadow. Life is very long. My name is Denga, Joseph Denga, CID. I have something for you here that you might find very interesting. It's relevant to the Isaac Mutuma case. Is it? Yes. And uh, this is one of Mapoka's boys who's coming in on a plea. Uh, take him into custody. <coughs> Isaac Matemwa, taking the law into your own hands is a very serious offense. It is illegal. I hope you understand that. We have a justice system in this country which operates under a constitution. And every citizen of Zimbabwe is supposed to adhere to it. Any breach of this constitution is not to be taken lightly. However, due to the uniqueness of this case and the gravity and the overwhelming evidence which has been presented in mitigation, I hereby caution and discharge you. You are a very lucky man, Mr. Matemba. Very lucky indeed. Thank you. Thank you very 
much. Thank you very much. May God reward rich sleep. But I mean, you which one? Thank you very much, madam. I'll slaughter a bull for you. Ah. What put them on? Treating you well here. That's good, that's good. Remember, I told you that you are going down for a very long time and that I would be there. Well, I'm here. Take him away. Hey, wait. Young man, you are playing with fire. You are playing with fire. Have fun, my boga. to get Giant to finally confess? It was easy. I just used the same old rule that has been used since time began. Divide and conquer. Mm. I showed him pictures of Kelvin from the coroner's office. They're not a pretty sight. And I said to him, unless he wanted to end up like that, he better start doing some serious talking. <laughs> I mean, what is he? He's six foot plus, built like a house. But still, he sang like a canary. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's such a shame, though. You know, these men commit these crimes under duress. Life has become so cheap that people will stoop to any level for the love of money. True. Mr. Mapoka, <clears throat> now like I said to you the last time, I will get you out, all right? I will assemble for the right price the best team of lawyers money can buy. All I need you to do... Young man, get me out of here today! Sir, you know I cannot get you out of here today. Get me out of here now! Oh, Joe. You are a truly remarkable man. The last of a dying breed. Well, Mr. Bingo, I guess our job here is done. Joe? Are you okay? Oh, uh, so yes, sorry. <laughs> sorry, um, I was just thinking about my mother. <laughs> oh, thank you very much, Joe. No, 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 please, don't, don't take it like that. It's just... It's just that. My... My mother was 15 when I was born. She was raped by the man she worked for as a maid. A group of Catholic sisters 
who ran a home for victims of teenage pregnancy took her in. She ran away after giving birth to me. I was taken to an orphanage. When I was about 11 or 12, I started asking questions. I, I was a persistent kid. <laughs> Eventually, I was taken to the Catholic nuns to, to try and get some answers. My mother had died of AIDS after becoming a prostitute. My auntie, or at least that's who I was told she, she was, took me to where my mother was buried. battered old piece of metal for a tombstone. Ah, I visit her grave every day and I vow to avenge her death. I think now she will rest in peace. There's one more thing. <laughs> uh, I would, would be honored if you were present when I lay a tombstone on my mother's grave. Yeah. Yes, of course. That will be an honor and a privilege. Thank you. Thank you. Between the desire and the spasm, between the potency and the existence, between the essence and the descent, falls the shadow. For thine is life. This is the way the world ends. This is the way the world ends. This is the way the world ends. Not with a bang, but a whimper. Look again, and pass it by me.